In this video, we're going to study the types of movement. We have a lot here, flexion, extension, circumduction, inversion, but it's important to know that all these motions or movements are described with respect to the anatomical position. Remember, the anatomical position is standing up facing forwards with your palms facing forwards. We have abduction, that's movement away from the midline. And then adduction is movement towards the midline. And we're talking about terms um, that apply to the appendicular skeleton, the arms and legs. Now, the way I remember this, adduction has the word ad in it. And when you bring your arms or your legs down to your midline, it's like you're adding them to your body. Abduction is pushing them away from your body, and adduction is adding them to your body. So it's not just the arms here. You can also do that um, with your legs as well. So when this individual brings his leg out to the side, that's abduction. When he brings it back to midline, that's adduction. With your fingers as well, when the fingers are spread out, that's abduction. When the fingers are brought together, that's adduction. We can also do that with the wrist joint. The best way to um, do this right now at your desk, um, this, this person, this is their right hand, so why don't you take your right hand, put it to your side in the anatomical position, and bend your wrist towards your body. That's adduction. Now bend it away from your body. That's abduction. Flexion and extension, you're familiar with this. Flexion is when you decrease the angle at a joint. So when this person's hand goes up, that's flexion. When their hand goes down, the angle here gets bigger, that's extension. And if this person would have moved their wrist past anatomical position, that's hyperextension. So here's flexion of the wrist, extension of the wrist. Now when this person's head goes forwards, that's flexion. You can see the angle decreasing here. When they bring their head back to anatomical position, that's extension. And if they go back past the anatomical position, that's hyperextension. We see that here as well. We're going to be looking at flexion and extension of the hip. So when this person brings their foot out, that's flexion of the hip. When they bring their foot back, that's extension. And then when they bring it past anatomical position, that's hyperextension. All right, when this person lifts their foot up, they bend their knee, that's extension. When they bring their foot back down, that's extension. When they bring it past anatomical position, that's hyperextension. Circumduction, this is moving the limb in a circular path. So what that does, that combines all the motions we've looked at. Abduction, adduction, flexion, extension, all into one circular motion. So one way you can think about circumduction is if you were writing like a big circle on the chalkboard. Oh yeah, look at that big circle. All right, pronation, that's moving the palm from face up to face down. So starting in this position and flipping your palm down, that's called pronation. And then starting in this position and flipping your palm up, that's called supination. There's pronation and supination. Pronation, supination. Here's another illustration of the same thing. I want you to notice how the ulna stays relatively motionless. So it's really the radius that's rotating around the ulna. Pronation, supination. We have internal rotation, or sometimes called medial rotation. That's rotational movement towards the midline. So this person has internal, er, internally rotated um, their joint right here, their shoulder joint. This person has externally rotated or laterally rotated their shoulder joint. And you can do that with the leg as well. Um, we'll be discussing it with respect to the anterior portion here, so of the person's thigh. When this person's thigh rotates medially, that's internal rotation. Now when this person's leg swings up and their thigh rotates out, that's called lateral or external rotation. And this is of clinical significance for, oh boy, a lot of reasons. But one thing that you'll notice just casually walking around, um, some people tend to have 
internally rotated hips here. And you can notice that because they kind of have knobby knees sometimes, um, especially um, noticeable in babies. We have two special motions of the foot called inversion and eversion. Inversion is when you take the sole of your foot or the plantar region and you push it in or towards the midline. Eversion is when you take this plantar surface down there and you push it out. So here we go. This is the plantar or the sole going in. That's inversion. Here's the plantar region going laterally or out. That's eversion. We have plantar flexion, which is extension of the ankle. It's kind of confusing because it's called plantar flexion, yet we have extension of the angle. But that's like, of the ankle rather. That's like standing on your tiptoes. So when this person's toes go down, that's plantar flexion. I kind of think of it like they're flexing their plantar region. And then we have dorsiflexion. That's flexion at the ankle, at the ankle rather. So dorsiflexion is when the toes go up. That's if you were like digging in your heels motion, if you will. So here's plantar flexion, plantar flexion. And then here's dorsiflexion. Protraction is moving a body part anteriorly in the horizontal plane. So you remember the planes. You move your head forwards, that's protraction. Moving your head backwards or posteriorly that's retraction. And then we have elevation. That's moving a body part in the superior direction. And depression, moving a body part in the inferior direction. So if you elevate your shoulders, you move them superiorly. That's elevation. If you let them drop, that's moving post, that's moving inferiorly rather. That's depression. Same thing can be done with the jaw or the mandible. If you shut your mouth, or you close your mouth, or lift up your mandible, that's elevation. When you open your mouth, your mandible drops, and that's the depression of the mandible. And then we have lateral flexion. This is bending at the side, so there's actually um, lateral flexion of the um, thoracic um, vertebrae. And then here we have lateral flexion of the cervical vertebrae. And then lastly, we have opposition. Opposition is simply when your thumb touches the um, pads of the opposing fingers.